Maureen and welcome to my kitchen. I've gotten a lot of questions over the last little while, I'll say, um, about yeast. People seem to be a little bit confused about the difference between active dry yeast, rapid rise yeast, instant yeast, quick rise yeast, because everybody sees something different in the grocery store or maybe you go there and you see six different things and it's just causing a lot of confusion. So today I'm going to demystify yeast for you. Let's go see what this is all about. And I can see where the confusion lies. You're going to look and this is what you're going to see because this is what I saw. Because I bought one of everything that they had, okay? I went to my Walmart and this is what they had on the shelf. I see uh, active dry yeast. I see a Fleshman's Rapid Rise, a pizza crust yeast, and a Red Star Quick Rise yeast. I'm not endorsing. I've not been sponsored. And I'm not here to tell you one is better than the other. But I'm going to give you my personal opinion here. This, just get rid of. I can't stand that brand of yeast, and that is from personal experience over the years. And frankly, I wouldn't give you a whole lot for these either. Um, this is just my personal opinion. I've been using SAF for the last 20 years, and that's what I stick with because it's tried, it's true, it always works. Now, what's the difference between active and rapid rise. Now what I'm going to tell you is you're also going to find a little jar that's called bread machine yeast. Do you know that the bread machine yeast and the rapid rise yeast are exactly the same thing? Do you also know that the bread machine yeast and the rapid rise yeast are what I refer to as instant yeast? This just means that they do not have to be proofed, that you don't have to do anything but toss it in the bowl and all the work is done for you. This pizza crust yeast is a bit of a quandary to me. The only difference between this yeast and this yeast is that this has ascorbic acid added to it. So it's got some vitamin C powder mixed in there with the yeast and there's a little bit of a sweetener going on in there. So that's the only difference. This is just a marketing ploy, that's all. So that leaves us basically with two different types of yeast. It leaves us with active dry and instant or rapid rise, okay? Rapid rise is instant yeast. This is just what this particular brand is calling, see, instant yeast. It's right there on the package. So I'm going to show you the difference. If you look closely here, I'll put some in my hand. Those grains are kind of large, okay? You can definitely see how big they are um, in comparison to these grains, which are much finer. You see, there is a distinct difference here. The rapid rise yeast is a much smaller grain than the active dry yeast. And that's one of the reasons that the instant yeast works differently. Now, rapid rise, like I said, you just toss it in the bowl with your flour and your other ingredients and it's all good. The active dry yeast must be proofed. That means you have to, what they like to call, prove your yeast. And sometimes people think, oh, that's a big, special, important thing. That just means we're going to get the yeast wet and we're going to introduce a sweetener or a sugar. Because the yeast is a bacteria and it needs to be fed. Now I'm going to get a little warm water here. When you proof your yeast, you want to make sure that your water is about um, 100 degrees, 110, but no more than 110. All right? So what you want to do is proof your yeast. You don't need a lot of sugar. So I'm going to put like a quarter of a teaspoon in here. And we're going to prove that yeast. I'm just going to add it right to it. Okay. we're going to go ahead and add some water. Okay, just get your spoon in there and mix it around. And listen, it doesn't matter if you sprinkle it on the top or if you pour the water in there. It doesn't matter. 
you want to look for bubbles. So you're just going to go and when you're preparing your recipe, if you're using active dry yeast, you're going to do this first, then you're going to get everything else mixed up, and while you're doing that, your yeast should prove. When you come back to this in a few more minutes, it should be frothy and foamy and look positively alive. I prefer to use instant yeast because this is an unnecessary step, in my opinion, when I get a fabulous result using an instant yeast. Now, the red yeast is an instant yeast, as is the gold yeast, but the instant red yeast is just everyday instant yeast. The gold yeast is an instant yeast that is suitable for things that are higher in sugar, like a sweet dough, or what I typically use this for is something uh, of a heavier dough. Like if you're going to make a rye bread or a sourdough, I usually try and use my gold yeast, but not always. It just depends. Um, this has a little more staying power. It gives a splendid rise to your dough um, because when you have a high amount of sugar in a yeast dough, it takes a long time for that dough to rise. And when you use the gold variety, um, it takes less time for those sugary doughs to rise. So there is one other type of yeast and I'm going to insert a picture here while I talk about it and it is cake yeast or fresh yeast or wet yeast. Um, this is typically what your grandmother would have used when you get your grandmother's bread recipe and it's going to call for a cake of yeast. It's about a one ounce cake. It's like a little cube and it's uh, very soft. It almost looks like an eraser, but it flakes apart very easily like it were, um, for lack of a better comparison, blue cheese. Um, it will flake apart or crumble and that's what you would add to your warm water and you should treat cake yeast just like active dry yeast. So you're going to need to prove it. You're going to need to add um, some moisture and some sugar to feed it before you add it into your flour mixture to make your sponge for your dough. These little packets are usually about two and a quarter teaspoons worth of yeast. Like if you have a recipe that calls for a packet, you're, you're gonna know that this is two and a quarter teaspoons so that when you have the bulk yeast, you can, you know, measure for measure, you'll be able to get the proper amount. But you can see already, this is starting to look alive. It's getting rather foamy and the bubbles are starting to rise to the surface and get rather large. That's how you know that your yeast is alive. I keep my bulk yeast in the freezer at all times. This mason jar stays in the freezer. If I'm going to use these packets, I'm going to stick them in a plastic bag in the freezer. When you freeze yeast, you basically negate that expiration date. Because once yeast is frozen, it's basically being suspended in time and its lifespan is being cryogenically preserved for Ever, for an indefinite period of time. So keep your yeast in the freezer where it will literally last forever and you don't have to worry about that expiration date. So you can see how much bigger this is getting. Now you know that your yeast is proven. Get all your ingredients together, then add this with your liquid and proceed as usual. Rapid rise yeast, you just toss the dry stuff into the bowl along with all of the other ingredients and then you mix it and knead it as usual. That is a little demystification of yeast. I hope it was helpful and I hope you learned something. I hope that this encourages you to get in your kitchen and make something with yeast. And I hope you try it and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you liked what you watched today and I hope that you try it and I hope that you love it. Uh, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, happy eating!